Most photographers are focusing on all of the wrong things when purchasing a new camera. So in today's video, I wanna talk about what I think is the most important spec for photographers, especially landscape photographers, that you should be paying attention to before you buy your next camera. Hey everybody, my name is Austin James Jacks. I'm a landscape photographer based in the beautiful Southern Utah area. In this video, I'm really excited to dive into the most important spec you should be paying attention to when you're looking to buy a new camera. And no, this is not the megapixel count that people love to talk about and the brands love to talk about. Uh, spoiler alert, it is actually something called dynamic range, which is exactly the topic of this video and I think the most important spec when you're buying a new camera. A dynamic range is important in so many different kinds of photography, but it is absolutely the most important aspect when it comes to landscape photography. So simply put, dynamic range is the difference between the very brightest spot in your image, such as the bright sky, and the darkest spot in your image, such as the shadows in the foreground. Since so much of landscape photography is shooting at either sunset or sunrise when there's amazing light conditions, there's a really large difference between the brights and the darks in your scene during those times. And that is why the dynamic range is so incredibly important. So, Camera with more dynamic range means that you'll be able to pull down the highlights and bring up the shadows while still retaining the highest amount of detail possible. If your camera's got poor dynamic range, you're gonna lose details in your shot. Whether you're gonna blow out the sky or you're gonna have a totally dark foreground, uh, you will lose a lot of details. Now, if your camera has poor dynamic range and you find yourself shooting a scene with a really large difference between the brightest and darkest spots, a lot of photographers will use a technique called HDR or high dynamic range. I want to address this before we go further in the video. This technique involves taking multiple different photos at different exposure values to get a shot where the brights are properly exposed, the midtones are properly exposed, and the darks are properly exposed. And you're going to blend those photos later. So again, you're taking multiple different photos at these exposures. However, I do not recommend using this technique because more often than not, you're gonna get some really unrealistic looking images, whether the photo just doesn't look right or you've got ghosting on the edges from the blend or whatever it may be. Um, if you don't really know what you're doing or you're new to photography, do not do this technique. And of course, uh, with some of the most advanced camera sensors seen on DSLR and mirrorless cameras today, you don't need this technique in order to capture many scenes, which all comes back full circle in why I'm recommending that the dynamic range is so incredibly important for landscape photography. So I wanna run you by a quick example here. I shoot with a Sony a7R IV, which is one of the cameras with the best dynamic range at the time of this video being made. Since getting this camera, I've always been able to get enough dynamic range in a single shot for any photo that I've been out shooting. I find that on my camera personally, if there is more dynamic range than I can capture, that it's not gonna look realistic anyways to use an HDR, and oftentimes I'll consider leaving a very small portion of the scene blown out or totally dark. And this is just a really small portion, like just a hair of the sun or just a really, really dark spot in the foreground. We're not talking like a whole sky blown out kind of thing. So additionally, I like to have a wide range of luminosity values in my scene. I don't mind just having that one tiny little spot of my image totally bright or another spot just totally dark. Now, it used to be hard to know what to expect in terms of the dynamic range out of a new camera. I recently found a pretty amazing tool that's gonna show you all kinds of cameras and how their dynamic range ranks against other camera brands. The website is called DxO Mark, which I'm gonna link in the description down below so that you can go look for yourself. When you go to the camera sensor rankings, you get four different metrics. Portrait tells you how the color depth of the camera is. Sports tells you how the camera performs at high ISO, while landscape tells you how much dynamic range the camera has. Then of course, overall combines everything to give one overall score. Now, while all these aspects are important while picking out a camera, the landscape option tells us how the dynamic range of the camera stacks up with some of the other best cameras on the market, which again, like I said, is the most important thing for landscape photography. I always click on landscape to sort by this metric, allowing me to see some of the best cameras out there when it comes to dynamic range. Now, at the time of making this video today, the cameras netting the highest score for dynamic range include the Nikon D810, the Nikon D850, and the Sony A7R5. These are the cameras that you can expect to see some of the most dynamic range out of, and looking into the future, I would fully expect these brands to continue to roll out cameras with even better dynamic range. 
Now, as a little bonus, you can even adjust what is shown in the list. If you wanna see cameras that fit a certain budget or cameras of a certain brand, you can adjust what's being shown on the list at the top of the screen. On this page, you can even see the launch date and launch price of each camera and you can click on a particular camera to get a full review from DxO Mark as well, where they've typed up paragraphs and paragraphs reviewing each and every camera. Seeing as though DxO Mark isn't affiliated with any of these companies, it's really nice that you are seeing a totally unbiased and factual review rather than relying on a particular camera company to tell you how many stops of dynamic range the camera has, which generally tends to be pretty unreliable. So now you know why dynamic range is absolutely the most important feature to look for when you're buying a new camera. Now, unfortunately, the major brands don't usually look at dynamic range as a huge selling point because I, and I totally understand it, it doesn't move cameras because people don't understand what that looks like or what it means. Instead, they rely on things like advertising the megapixels, the battery life, the external features, the flip out screens, the improved ergonomic grip, um, and all those things to help sell their cameras. Now, while all of these things might be nice and useful for all kinds of photographers, dynamic range is absolutely the most important thing. It's more important than any of those features combined. Now, if you're looking for a new camera, do not overlook the dynamic range capabilities if you're serious about capturing better photos and you wanna do less work while you're editing. Thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video. I'd love to hear your thoughts and questions. So if you have any, please leave them down below. Otherwise, if this video was helpful for you guys, please consider leaving a like and a subscribe in order to help me to continue to grow my channel. If you didn't already know, I post weekly videos covering anything and everything to do with photography and photo editing, with each video being hyper-focused on doing everything I can to help you become a better photographer in as little time as possible.